Hi, welcome to Budget MTG Days. All magic fun, all cards under a dollar. I'm David. I'm Stefan. Today we're going to be looking at all the multicolored cards, the lands, and the artifact cards in Amoncat. So we're going to evaluate them like before for limited, so draft or sealed. Exactly. We're going to be using our three tiered system. Once again, you should already by now know what the three tiers are, but we're going to go over it really quick. Tier one, those are your awesome bombs. It's going to be winning you the games. Tier 2, these are really good cards, you're going to auto include them if you're already in those colors or you're going to be forced to look if you're going to want to go into those colors if you've got multiples of these. And Tier 3, those are your filler cards to fill out your curve and the rest of the cards we're going to put those aside because they're either too situational or they're just really crappy. Uh, let's get started with the common cards. The first card is Evolving Worlds. It's a land you can sacrifice Evolving Worlds, search your library for a basic land card and put it in the battlefield tapped and then you shuffle your library. So it's really nice because it's mana fixing and you're playing two colors so it's not that relevant but if you're playing more it will become more and more relevant and I think it's always a good card to play so whenever you're seeing it just put it in your deck. Absolutely, naturally uh, we're going to put this as tier 2. Tier 2 works a little bit differently when the card is colorless or uh, only requires generic mana to play, for example. If it's tier 2, it basically means it's auto-include if you're in those colors, but since it's any color, it's auto-include in every deck, pretty much. Yeah. So that is very similar to the next card, Cradle of the Accursed, that's also tier 2, so also played in any, in any deck. It's a desert, and we can tap it for a colorless mana. Additionally, we can pay 3 generic mana and tap it and sacrifice it, and then we can give ourselves a 2-2 black zombie creature token, but we can only do this anytime we can play a sorcery, so during either one of our two main phases. So we can't do instant speed, which, you know, it's too bad that we can't do that, but still, at the beginning of the game, it doesn't come in tap, so you're, you're not missing your, uh, your tempo, you can just play your, your cards. Later on, with that too much mana, you just turn this one into a zombie. I really like that. Yeah, exactly. It makes you do something with the mana you're having too much. Yeah. So yeah. If your mana flooded, you know, you know what? I'll just turn into a zombie, and that's pretty nice to have that kind of. Well, know, what we talk, what we talk very often is that cards are extra good when they can do something at the beginning of the game, and they can also do something at the end of the game. So that's what gives it that extra versatility, and this is a exactly. good example of that. So the next one, Sunscorched Desert. It's a desert, and when Sunscorched Desert enters the battlefield, it deals 1 damage to the target player, and can tap it for a colorless. So, it isn't that great, it's the 1 damage doesn't really help you that much most of the time, so that's why tier 3, if you don't really have that many colorless lands, it's fun to put it in, because it's just that extra card, but if you already have a couple of colorless lands, then just don't put it in. Leave it out, yeah, that's why this is tier 3. Uh, then we have Painted Bluffs, it is also a desert, and this guy also gives us taps for a colorless mana, but we can pay a, a, a mana of any color and tap it to give us mana of the color that we want. Okay, so basically it filters mana, so that does mean that if we do want a mana of the color that we require, it's going to actually cost us two, because we have to tap one land for the mana, and we're going to have to tap this one as well to filter it, so that kind of puts you behind. Still, tier 2 though, because of the fact that it works as more than just a filter land and it can also give you just a colorless mana uh, by itself and it doesn't come in tap. So I think that really pushes into tier 2 territory. Yeah, exactly, because we've seen a lot of cards having double mana cost and that's why it's really nice to get that extra one of that raw color. Yeah. So next one, Honed Kopesh. It's a, a generic mana and equipment. Crit creature gets plus 1 plus 1 and equip cost of 1. So, it's for 1 mana plus 1 plus 1, it isn't really that relevant, and you have to pay a mana to put something on. It doesn't get removed because of the equipment, but still, is it enough? Does it warrant a slot in your deck? I don't think so. That's yeah. why I put it aside. Exactly. Next, we have Luxor River Shrine for 3. We have an artifact. We can pay a generic, tap it, and then gain a life, and then we we'll put a brick counter on, uh, on this card. Okay, great. So it's got a brick counter. Then, uh, once it's got three brick counters on it, then we can tap it and then gain two life. <sighs> really? No, just do not play this card. It's not gonna help you, it's not gonna save you. The life gain is just way too little. And even then, if you're in a losing situation, this card is only gonna make you lose more. So please just put it aside instantly. Uh, Actually, those, th those are the, all, all the, the commons. Yeah, not exactly. a lot of commons uh, uh, there, so we're gonna go straight to the uncommons. 
The first uncommon is Grasping Dunes. It's a desert and you can tap it to add one colorless to your mana pool. And you can one and, and tap it, sacrifice Grasping Dunes, put a mana minus one, minus one counter on target creature, accessibility only any time you could cast a sorcery. So again, doing your main phases. It's pretty nice because you can tap it uh, for colorless, it doesn't come into tapped, and if you have mana uh, left, you can just tap it, sacrifice it, and get minus one, minus one counter something. It's removal, it swings something, so yeah, just put it in. Yeah, and even though it may not be instant speed, what's really cool is that people who know that you have this, you can still activate it after combat. And remember, the damage stays on the creatures that they after combat until the end of the turn, so that means that if they blocked, your 2-2 with their 3-3, they may actually not want to do that all of a sudden because they think, wait a second, I'm going to block your 2-2 with my 3-3. Of course, I'm going to kill that 2-2, but then later in the second main phase, we can activate this, put a minus one, minus one counter on it, and that will be sufficient to kill that 3-3. So that's going to be very nice. Then we have Watchers of the Dead for two mana. It is a 2-2 cat artifact creature. So actually a 2-2 for two. That's already fine, yeah. which is amazing because it actually doesn't require any particular color. So this is actually usually you have to pay, uh, if you're going to be paying two mana, you're going to get a 2-1. And now you actually get a 2-2, which is a great deal. With an additional ability, we can exile this card. And then each opponent chooses two cards in their graveyard, and then they have to exile the rest. Okay, that's probably not going to happen that often, because even if they do have something juicy in the graveyard, it'll probably only be one or two cards. So if we make them exile the rest, that, they're probably still going to keep exactly the things that they want. But still, a 2-2 two, two for 2, nothing uh, nothing to sniff at, very exactly. good filler. Because if you need a filler in your 2 slot, uh, slot, this will fit in any deck. Exactly. Embalmer tools, 2 mana artifact, activate abilities of creature cards in your graveyard, cost 1 less to activate. So, like Embalm. And tap and untap zombie you control, target player puts the top card of his or her library into his or her graveyard. So, this will not be relevant, because how many zombies will you have, and how many turns will it take you to mill them out or to win by attacking yeah so just put it aside yeah or how many embalm cards do you need to make this worth it <laughs> exactly totally not worth it a card that is worth it is shadow storm vizier for a blue and a black so for two mana we get a one three human cleric with flying okay awesome for two mana we get a one three which is already fine that's already yeah. fine filler but the fact that it's got flying brings it over the edge super cool Additionally, when you cycle or discard a card, this guy gets plus one, plus one until the end of turn. So nice little potential for a surprise there, being able to do that instant speed. Really strong. If you're in black and blue, it's an auto include. If you got a couple of these, look for those colors. That's a tier two. Yeah. Wayward Servant. It's a white and a black. It's a 2-2 two -two zombie. Whenever another zombie enters the battlefield under your control, each opponent loses one life and you gain one life. You'll probably not have that many zombies. It's still a 2-2 two, two for 2, but two different colors, so real difficult, and I don't think this one is that great. So it's still a good filler because it has upside, and it's already a 2-2 two, two for 2. Yeah, so if you're in those colors, yeah, look at it as yeah, a filler card. Exactly. Next, Honored Crop Captain for a red and a white, we get a 3-2 Human Warrior. Here we go, now we're getting there. And uh, whenever this guy attacks, other attacking creatures get plus 1, plus 0 until the end of turn. Wow, so it also pumps your team. This is insanity. This is super sick. Always played heavy aggressive tier two. Not much more to say about that. No, exactly. Even if you're not really that aggressive, it just pumps your team. And it's already a three two for two. Yeah. Amazing. Destined to lead. So it's an aftermath card, and destined part is one and a black instant. Total creature gets plus one plus zero and gains indestructible until end of turn. So that's already really good. It gives indestructible, it pumps up on the power and the sorcery, the lead. Um, part is a three and a green aftermath. All creatures able to block target creature this turn able to do so. So that's actually really good because you can target a small creature and attack with the rest of your team. Everything has to block the small creature, and then you take gain, getting a tons of damage in. Yeah, I can see this card winning you the game. Uh, yeah. The first part being a combat trick, removing something, and the second part being the, the full full blown attack where you send everything in and you just kill them. Exactly. This is one of the few aftermath cards we see that are always really relevant. Yeah, yeah. beautiful. Tier two. Next, we have Oketra's Monument for three with a legendary artifact, and it states that our white creature spells cost one less to cast. Also, whenever you cast a creature spell, create a 1-1 white warrior creature token with Vigilance. 
this is super relevant. Even if you're not playing white, it doesn't matter that you're not getting that, that extra discount on your white creature spells because Every creature you play, be it green, black, doesn't matter, it's still giving you an extra one-on-one -on -one body with Vigilance, and I think in the long run that is going to be huge. Tier 2, always play it, no matter what color you're in. Exactly, no, we don't really like these kind of effects, you have to pay 3 mana to do nothing, essentially, but you want to play creatures, and you get an extra creature every single time, Yeah, and that's what I think this is good enough yeah normally what happens is if you play this it does nothing and then you could play something else and then you have to pay extra to get an effect this one you play this one and then you could play something which is cheaper and you don't have to pay anything extra to get an effect so all those things together means it is actually really good exactly and when someone counters your creature it's on cast so you still get the ability sweet kefnet's monument also three mana legendary artifacts blue creature spells you cost cost low on less to cast and when you cast a creature spell, target creature opponent controls doesn't untap during his controls next untap step. So that's pretty cool to never untap someone's uh, exit creature, but still it doesn't tap on itself and that's why I think it's a tier 3 card because it still makes your blue creatures um, cheaper and I think the ability isn't relevant enough. No, no. if it would tap something, even if it would just be tapped, that would really be much better. Exactly. Bontu's Monument is next for three. Again, legendary artifact. Black creatures you, you uh, cast cost one less. Great. So now for black. In this case, whenever you cast a creature spell, each opponent loses a life and you gain a life. Kind of the same story. Gives you a little bit of reach. It's fun. Could be a filler card, but it's not as strong as, as the, the white one. Yeah. Next one. Hazard's Monument. Three mana. Legendary artifacts. This one for the red one. It will make your red creatures cost one less to cast. And whenever you cast a creature spell, you may discard a card. If you do, draw a card. Rummaging. Exactly. Every single creature you play. And it makes them um, cheaper. And there's more mages. So that's so good. Yeah, especially of course in limited, we're digging for our bomb, we're digging for our premium removal, and we're getting rid of uh, maybe the lands late game that we don't need, getting something better. Super powerful. This is definitely tier two. Exactly. Uh, Rona's Monument is next for three legendary artifact. Once again, this one makes your green uh, creature spells cheaper. Whenever you cast a creature, a green, a creature spell, my green. Whenever you cast a creature spell, target creature you control gets plus two, plus two, and gains trample at the end of the turn. This is also super strong. Trample is really relevant. The fact that every little creature that you play all of a sudden is going to make your 2-2 two -two into a 4-4 four -four with trample, for example, that is actually huge, and I think we'll be able to. Uh, push you over the edge in winning the game. So it's also tier two. Exactly. Like I said before, I really like the trample and it just pumps up and trample for free for basically. Free. Yeah, so nice. Yeah. Edifice of Authority. Three mana artifact. One and a tap. Target creature can't attack this turn. Put a brick counter on Edifice of Authority. One mana tap until end of your turn. Next turn, target creature can't attack or block. And its activated abilities can be activated. Activate ability only if there are three or more big counters on Edifice of Authority. So the first three turns you can it cannot attack you and then you can lock it down. But for three mana, so on turn six or the earliest no seven actually, because you have to activate it three times. On turn seven on the earliest you're actually um, locking something down. I think we can make it very simple and say this is just not such a great card. It is not such a don't, great card. Don't, but you could, we put it in as a tier 3 as a filler because yeah. it kind of works as a removal but you're going to be looking at other removal. Exactly, because you have to pay mana every single, every single turn. Time. Exactly. And then we go to Gate to the Afterlife for 3, we get an artifact. Whenever a non-token creature we control dies, we gain 1 life. Yay. And, we, and then you draw a card. Ah! And then you discard a card. Mm. Okay. So. We do like uh, drawing a card and discarding a card, that's called looting, we do like that. However, it only works, it doesn't work when a creature comes in, which would be way better, but it's when a creature dies, and it's also a non-token creature. Uh, and fire. So already, that's, I'm not too excited about that. And then for two mana, I'm tapping it and sacrificing it, we get to search our graveyard hand or library for the card called God Pharaoh's Gift, which is not in the set, so it's completely irrelevant. Uh, basically, put it aside, This do not play it, it's not going to help you out. But you should treat it as... What do you think it will be? Nobody cares. It's not in the set. So let's go to the next no, card. Maybe the, it will be in the next one. 
So what will it be? What the God the Pharaoh's, Pharaoh's gift? Gifts. What do you know. think it will be? I don't know. Because it's, it's a gate to the afterlife. It's it's four in the morning right now. <laughs> I don't have any any energy anymore to uh, to think about what cards it could potentially be. Okay, let's go to the next one then. Yep. Start to finish. It's two and a white. It's instant. Create two one one white warrior creature tokens with vigilance and the aftermath part. It's a sorcery for two and a black. It's you can additional cost. You can have to sacrifice a creature, and then you can destroy a target creature. Nice. So for six mana, you can get a creature and you destroy a creature. That's actually pretty good because we. I'm not really mad at paying a lot of mana for my unconditional removal because you have them anyways, and you the things you want to unconditionally remove are bombs anyways. Yeah, and what's cool is that the fact that you're able to create those two one one creatures, that's instant speed, so that's really nice. You can use it when somebody's attacking you, you can use that to, to create some extra blockers, and then also you can kill them as well. So it can be a kill spell already really early in the game by having, giving you some, some surprise, uh, some surprise uh, blockers. Exactly, so tier two. Absolutely. Then we go to Merciless Javelinier for two, a black and a red. So for four mana, we get a four two Minotaur Warrior. Okay, I don't really like my four twos as usual, but this one's got a cool ability. For two mana and discarding a card, we get to put a minus one, minus one counter on target creature. That creature can't block this turn. Now all of a sudden, they're gonna have to, uh, we're making something smaller, it can't block that thing that, that was gonna trade uh, in a way that was not advantageous to us, all of a sudden can't block anymore, and they have, they have to throw that big creature in front of it to trade. And if we have more mana and we have more cards, we can do it multiple times, instant speed, which means people are just not going to want to block it because we may make it so small that that creature won't be able to kill Merciless Javelinier anymore, and then they're really not sitting pretty. So, very powerful card, late game as well. Uh, it's going to be doing a lot of work, I think. Yeah, exactly. Picture. But I think even if you only can activate it once because you draw a card a turn, I don't think that's bad at all because every single turn you're shrinking something and it can block. Yeah, so super it's good. always good. Nice. So reduce to wobble. It instant counter target spell unless control is page three for two and a blue, and wobble two and a red sorcery aftermath up to three target lands. Don't untap during this next um, untap step. It, I mean, you cancel for three mana, so that's already better. But do you really need to put the wobble in? I don't think. It will do enough and just put it aside. Yeah, this is a very feel bad card. Late game, it does absolutely nothing. Absolutely nothing. Because they're going to have the mana to be able to pay for the spell that you're trying to counter. And they're not going to care that you're tapping those lands because they got plenty of mana anyway. So it's awful. Exactly. With the wobble, you can buy you some time, but is that worth it? Yeah. yeah. Because you're also paying three mana. Yeah, and first you need to get this into the graveyard before you exactly. cast it. So first you gotta reduce something, which, yeah, no, no, don't do it. Next we have a Weaver of Currents for one, a green, and a blue. So for three mana, we get a 2-2 two, two Naga Druid, which can tap for two colorless mana. Okay, pretty cool. It's not gonna be winning any games, but if you're already in those colors, nice filler, can ramp you, and the 2-2 two, two body is fine. Exactly. Tier, um, onwards to victory. Two and a red, instant, talk creature get plus X, Plus zero until end of turn, where X is his power, and sorcery aftermath for two and a white top creature gains double strike until end of turn. Like we said before, it's a tier three because the onwards is pretty nice because it's instant. So if um, after blockers, if you want to trade with something, or even just get to some really massive damage, and victory double strikes always pretty good and. Even then, it's just bonus. Yeah. So and yeah, you can actually play this on the same uh, on the same turn. Six is yeah. not too unrealistic, giving something quadruple damage, pretty much. Exactly. Yeah. Pretty cool. So a good tier we got. Yeah. Then we have a Kenra Chariot tier for one, a red and a green. So for three mana, we get a three three Jack Warrior. That's already fine. That's actually pretty good for yeah. mana wise. It also has trample. Hey, that's much better. Now it's not getting blocked by those one-one vigilance warriors and other creatures you control trample too. Hey, come on, guys, let's all attack. Nobody's gonna get stopped. Super sweet tier two aggressive strategy or not? It's actually pretty sweet. Yeah. Spring to mind. It's all also an aftermath. Two and a green sorcery. Search your library for a basic land card. Put it in the battlefield tapped. Then shuffle your library. In the mind, four and two blue instant. Draw two cards. So. It mana ramps you for 3 mana, which is decent, 
And then for six mana you can draw two cards. Which isn't decent. It isn't decent. And it's, it's instant speed, but you already mana ramped and it's late game. If you really need something, you can always use it. Yeah. So because you're not losing a card by not using it. No, it's actually fine. Yeah. It's just fine. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So filler tier three. Then we have Enigma Drake for one, a blue and a red. So for three mana, we get an X4 Drake flying where X is equal to the number of instants and uh, sorcery cards in your graveyard. Okay, so that's pretty cool because you already got a pretty big butt in the air, which means just like, for example, the giant uh, spider is gonna be able to block a lot of stuff. And later on in the game, as it progresses, its power is gonna be exponentially larger, which is super nice. However, we also have to remember we're looking at all these aftermath cards that once we do play the aftermath cards, the, the card does get exiled, does get removed from our graveyard, so then it won't be relevant anymore. So you might wanna keep those in there snug just for a little bit longer to make sure your Drake is nice and chunky. Tier two. Yeah. Next one, Uncorp Champion, two green and white. It's a four for human warrior. It's already pretty good. And you may accept Uncorp Champion as it attacks. And when you do, untap all other creatures you control. So it gives all the things vigilance. Yeah, and it, other exert creatures love this guy. Exactly. So tier two, you really want to play this. Super strong, yeah. Then we have Aven Wind Guide for two, a white and a blue. So for four mana, we get a two, three bird warrior with flying and vigilance. Okay, that's fine. You know, I like my, my evasion creatures. This one can also block, the body's fine. Additionally, it also has creature tokens you control have flying and vigilance. Sweet, so when you got your embalmed creatures or your one, one creatures that already have vigilance, well, they'll now also have double vigilance and uh, flying. And of course we can embalm this thing for four uh, white and a blue. So for six mana, we bring this guy back one more time. Uh, so this is actually okay, but it's not as good as these other multicolor cards that we've been seeing that actually take over the game by themselves. This one can work well with other uh, tokens and uh, embalmed creatures, for example, but the two, three flying visions, good filler, not good enough to bring it to tier two. Yeah, but what with the embalm? Double flying and double vigilance. Double flying, double vigilance. I mean, that's, that's, that's amazing. That's the dream. That is the dream, yes. So the last uncommon, Decimator Beetle. Three black and a green. It's a four, five insect. And when he enters the battlefield, you, can put a, you have to put a minus one, minus one counter target creature you control. And whenever he attacks, remove a minus one, minus one counter from target creature you control. So not only itself. And you put a minus one, minus one counter up to on up to one target creature of defending player controls. So you move your minus one minus one counters, put minus one minus one counters on your opponent's things and yeah, going your own things, shrinking other people's things for five mana, four five, what more do you want? It is insanity. Yeah. This beetle is super sick. If it I is. draw this and I've got another couple of good black and, and green cards, which I think you probably will yeah. actually. You Black and green has been good. Oh, it's gonna be really nice with this. It's gonna be super nice. And even if you don't have any other mi ways to get minus one, minus one counters on, it doesn't matter. So just the four or five and the fact that you're gonna be able to give some one thing minus one, minus one good. It's really, yeah. really good. You're gonna love playing this. It's gonna be super awesome. Those, that's the last of the uncommons. Let's have a look at the rares. The first of our rares is actually a series of lands that are kind of like guild gates, except they also have cycling on top of them. So the first example is irrigated farmland. As you can see, it taps for white or blue, but it does come in tapped, so you can't use it on the turn it comes in. Later in the game, really cool, we can pay two mana and cycle it away and draw a card, which means it's very, very versatile. These cards are always good if you're gonna be, if you are in these colors, you're always gonna be playing it, it's tier two. Let's go really quickly over the other, other cards. Fetid Pools gives us black or uh, blue. Then we have Canyon Slaw, which gives us black or red. Then we have Sheltered Thicket, which gives us red or green. And then we have Scattered Groves, which gives us green or white. So next one, Cascading Cataracts. It's a land, it's indestructible, and it can tap to add a colorless to your mana pool. And for five mana, you can tap it. And five mana of any combination of colors, to your mana pool, which means you can make five colors with it for only six mana. There's also a filter, kind of a... Yeah, exactly. It's got mega filter. Mega filter, people! Yeah. It's better than normal filter. It's actually not better than normal filter. Really? The normal filter one, at least, uh, is able to filter us on uh, which is one mana, which we want later on, uh, earlier in the game. And this one can only start filtering once we have six mana. I don't think you understand what the word mega means. That's true, yeah. But it's still, you should put it aside. 
because it's mega crappy. <laughs> All right, next card, Pyramid of the Pantheon. For one, we get an artifact, and we can pay a uh, two mana and tap it to add one mana of any color to our mana pool. I'm going to put a brick counter on this guy. Okay, so it's basically, again, filtering us, and it's costing us uh, an extra, uh, an additional mana to be able to filter. Okay, and then finally, when once we have three count brick counters on it, we can tap it for three mana of any one color. Okay. This may seem really strong, but in the end, I think it's not going to be ramping us as much as we want. It's going to be slowing us down for three turns at least. And then after those three turns, if we're not, uh, then of course it's going to be ramping us greatly. But the question is, how far behind are we at this point if we've been slowing down for three turns? And I think probably too much later on in the game. You're not going to need all that mana. So I think you should probably put it aside. Yeah. Next one, Heaven to Earth. It's so aftermath is X and a green instant. Heaven deals X damage to each creature with flying, and Earth X uh, red red sorcery. Earth deals X damage to each creature without flying. And I really like this card, and I think I like this card better than you do. Yeah, absolutely. We had a great discussion about <laughs> this uh, previous to filming. Yeah. yeah, but we've seen a lot of flyers, and it kills a lot of flyers for cheap on instant speed. But even if you don't have a lot of flyers, you can pay an extra mana and you can play the earth. But you can also play the ma mana in someone else's turn and you can play earth in your own turn. And then for X, um, you can deal X damage, um, plus two, to all creatures without flying. And minus you, two. Um, yeah, minus two. Yeah. And if you do it after each other, you just have a board wipe. Yeah. And we don't really see those. Yeah, that's expensive board bike though. It is, but you can choose what you want to do with it. Yeah. The reason why I didn't like it very much is because I, I don't always see the heaven part being relevant and you first need to cast the heaven part to be able to get to the earth part. Uh, that's the only reason, because I actually do like the earth part. Uh, and then when Stefan said, yeah, you can always just keep that one mana open and then play that in your opponent's turn to get earth into the graveyard and then in your turn, pay four mana to deal two damage to each creature without flying. I thought, okay, you know what? That's actually fine. And it does scale up nicely. And you know what, sometimes, especially if you're in green and red, there's a good chance you won't have any flyers and your opponents will have flyers. So you know what, if the heaven part is all of a sudden relevant, that's icing on the cake. So if I'm in red and, and green, I'm probably including it anyway. No, no, no. You're including it anyway. I'm including it anyway. All right, good. Then we go to Throne of the God Pharaoh for two mana. It's a legendary artifact. It says at the beginning of your end step, each opponent loses like life equal to the amount of tapped creatures you control. Okay. You may think, ah, oh, great, I'm gonna swing it with my whole team and then they're gonna lose just as much as I'm attacking with. No, because if they block in, in certain ways and then you lose all your creatures, all of a sudden you don't have any tapped creatures anymore at the end step, the beginning of the end step, and hence they don't lose any life. So because of that, I can see situations where it would be handy, but it's not an auto-include. I'd say tier three, look very carefully at what deck you're playing. Exactly. Play with all the big butts. I think actually with a couple of flyers, a couple of evasion creatures, it could work well. Because yeah. even if they don't do a lot of damage, the fact that they're tapped after they're attacking and you don't have run the risk of losing them, the Throne of the God Pharaoh will actually do a bit more damage, given that extra reach. Exactly. So, failure to comply. One on a blue instant, return target spell to its owner's hand, and uh, a white sorcery aftermath. Choose a card name until your next turn. Your opponents can cast spells with the chosen name. So, you bounce something back in that turn, um, something they're casting, and then you play the comply in your turn to stop them from playing it next turn. So it will be saving you some time, but it's again, not changing anything. Exactly. Is that enough? And it's costing you a card. Yeah. So just put it aside. Exactly. Then we go to Temet, Vizier of Nakatumum. Nakatumum. Naka, Naktamum. Naktamum. Wow, these pronunciations <laughs> uh, are tricky. All right. Anyway, for a white and a blue, we get a 2-2. Two -two. This human cleric has at the beginning of the combat on your turn, we're gonna be able to give a creature token we control plus one plus one and make sure it can't be blocked this turn. Pretty sweet. We have seen there's quite a few ways to get one one vigilance uh, tokens out yeah. there. Plus we got our embalmed creatures, so not unrealistic. Then we'd be able to make one of our one ones into a two two vigilance unblockable every turn. That's pretty sweet. And it also has embalm itself for five mana, so we can bring it back and uh, we can do it later. And then of course it can target itself to make itself a three three unblockable. Yeah. Pretty cool. Exactly. So tier two. Yeah. 
if you're black, uh, blue and white, just play this. Wow, you can really see how late it is for us. We can't even, we don't even know what colors are anymore. Yeah. Great. Especially with all the multicolors. It's yeah. all colors, just... This is orange and ultraviolet. Uh, okay, <laughs> good enough. You yeah. see the card oh, on the yeah. screen. Exactly. Don't listen to us anymore <laughs> at this point. Cut to ribbons. Yeah. It's uh, also another aftermath. So the cut part is one on the red, it's a sorcery, cut deals 4 damage to target creature. So that's really nice. Super. Like you said before, you really want that 4 damage to be really cheap. And I think this is pretty cheap, especially yeah. because it's an extra card attached to it. Ribbons. It's a sorcery, aftermath, and for X and 2 black, each opponent loses X life. And that's really nice because you get that reach late game, you just remove something and you know later in the game it gets it low and um, gets opponent low, just kill him off with this. Yeah, this is exactly the kind of card that I want to see in black and red. You're being aggressive, you're trying to punch in that extra damage, you know, maybe later on you've got that one creature that's stopping you from attacking and then cut deals with that, you can still keep on attacking, do a little bit more damage and then end when, when, when it completely board stalled. You just use all your flooded mana and just cut them to ribbons. Exactly. Awesome, great card. Next we have uh, Hapatra, Vizier of Poisons for a black and a green. We get a 2-2 human cleric, so that's already right on curve, that's fine. Also, when this guy deals combat damage to a player, we get to put a minus one, minus one counter on target creature. Nice, so if they don't block it, we're making something else smaller and we could be killing stuff as well. And whenever we do do that, we're also going to, whenever we create one or more minus one, minus one counters, we're going to be able to create a one, one snake creature token with death touch. I mean, I love my one ones with death touch. If we're getting one for free every time that we create, that we're attacking, dealing damage and putting, making something smaller on our opponents. And maybe we've got other stuff that comes in that's also making minus one, minus one counters. Doesn't have to come from this card. You're also getting one ones with death touch. That is going to, oh, it's going to win you the game so hard. I think this is definitely a, a tier two. Man, there's some good cards in black and green. Exactly. And it also triggers when you put counters on yourself. Yeah. So that's also really nice. And black and green, all the colors that do that. Super good, super strong. Exactly. Prepare to fight. Aftermath, one on a white, instant, on top target creature, it gets plus two, plus two, and gets lifeling until end of turn. So it's a... Um, combat trick. Exactly. Which, as we've established already, these kind of combat tricks are very good because of the fact that they untap. Yeah. So and plus two, plus two, and lifelink is also pretty relevant. Yeah. And aftermath, you for three and a green a sorcery, target creature controls, fights a creature opponent controls. So the fighting, like we see in green, that's not really new, but still it is two things that are really good. That's why tier two. If you're in white and green, you're gonna play this. Super, super nice. I can easily see this uh, this card being able to deal with two cards of our opponent. Yeah. Once in combat and once later. Um, yeah, very, very strong. Always play it. Then we go to Nep the Worthy. Nep. Sorry. The Worthy <laughs> for one, a black and a red. It's a 2-2 two, two Minotaur Warrior. Great. This guy's got first strike. Okay, cool. Also, other Minotaurs you can try first strike. Okay, there are a bunch of Minotaurs actually, so that's cool. And as long as you have fewer, uh, one or fewer cards in hand, Minotaurs you control get plus two plus zero. That means that this thing's gonna be a four, two with first strike. Okay, sweet. Early game is relevant. Late game, it's gonna be attacking, being really difficult to block. Cause four power with first strike is almost impossible to stop as well. Additionally, when this guy deals combat damage to a player, each player discards a card. Okay, we're also losing a card, they're losing a card, so it's pretty much even Steven. But of course, if you're building something around with a bunch of embalmed cards or whatnot, or maybe with a lot of the aftermath cards, you can still get some value out of it. Not too shabby. I like it. Tier two. Yes, exactly. And you can also play around with it because you know you're gonna discard. So yeah. Rex to witches. Also an aftermath, two and two black. Sorcery, all creatures get minus two, minus two until the end of turn. So that's nice. And which is five and two blue. Sorcery, aftermath, each, uh, each opponent chooses a creature he or she controls, and you gain control of those creatures. So you just killed all the small things, and then you're looking at it. Okay, you know what? You can give me one of your bigger things. Yeah. Yeah. Once again, uh, the minus two, minus two is great. It's really strong, it's gonna hit so much stuff in limited. I mean, just already, if there would just be the rags part, I would be happy, more than happy to play it. The fact that it comes attached with 
Sure, it's a little bit overcosted, the richest part, but remember, for seven mana, you may think it's quite expensive to take something out of our opponent, but remember, we're taking something from them and we are gaining that. So the difference is going to be huge. It's going to make a big impact. Exactly. Super. And you like to steal other people's I things. Love it, love it, love it. And then we go on to Oracle's Vault for four mana. It's an artifact. We could pay two mana and tap it. Then we're going to exile the top card of our library and we get to, until the end of the turn, we can play that card. We still have to pay the mana cost for it, of course. And we're going to put a brick counter on it. Additionally, when we have uh, uh, three or more brick counters, then we can just tap it and then exile the top card and we can play it for free. Okay, that's of course ideal scenario. The problem is we do have to do the other thing three times. Let's say this comes in turn four, we still haven't done anything. Then turn five, we're going to pay to tap it. And then what if a card that's three or more uh, comes out or it gets shown that we can't play it? Um, if we didn't play a land, if we did get a land, then everything of four higher, we can't play it. That would be really unfortunate. So then we've got two turns that we don't do anything. And I think that's kind of risky. I do see situations where, of course, it does pay for itself and it gives you free draw constantly. It gets you that, uh, gives you that land, gives you that cheap spell right off the bat. And every turn you're getting more and more value out of it up to the point where you're just tapping and playing stuff for free. So that's why with a bit of caution, I don't see it as an automatic include as a tier two, but I do see a scenario where it would be nice. Look very carefully at your deck, whether you can whether you can stall the game long enough to make this get you the, the proper value. Don't exactly. play it in a hyper aggressive deck. Yeah, because you really need to survive to able to get the most use out of it. Yeah, so tier three. Yeah, so the, ne the next one, last wear, Bounty of the Luxa. It's two, a green and a blue. It's an enchantment. At the beginning of your peak combat main phase, move all flood counters from Bounty of the Luxa. If no counters were removed this way, Put a flood count on Bounty of the Luxa and draw a card. Otherwise, add colorless blue and now green to your mana pool. So what this says is you play for, uh, for on turn 4 or later. You play it, you don't really do anything. Next turn, you draw a card. The turn after that, 3 mana. And draw a card and 3 mana again after that. So I think it's just too slow. Turn 4, like we said before, it's pretty crucial point. And then you're not doing anything. Turn five, you're drawing one card. Turn six, you're getting three mana. But what are you going to do with three mana on turn six, the earliest? Yeah, that's very risky. Very risky to play this card. I say, do yourself a favor and pop down a three three instead. Exactly. If you can. Yeah. So put that card aside. That is the last of the rares. Let's have a look at the mythics. The first of the mythics is Nissa, Steward of Elements. So for X, a green and a blue mana, we'll get an X. Loyalty Planeswalker. Now that means that uh, if we, the minimum we're gonna have to play this card is for three mana, and then we're gonna get a one Loyalty Planeswalker, then we can plus two it to scry two. Okay, that's pretty cool. That's basically the equivalent of drawing a card about. We can also uh, minus zero it to look at the top card of our library. If it's a land or creature card with converted mana cost less than or equal to uh, the, the loyalty, loyalty counters of Nissa, then we're gonna be able to play it for free. Okay, that's pretty sweet. And the minus six is we're going to turn two of our lands into five, five elemental creatures with flying and haste until the end of turn. And they're still going to be lands. Usually the minus, uh, the minus whatever it is, the biggest uh, ultimate is going to be winning you the game. In this case, I don't think so, actually. No. And also, by the way, the zero, you, may, you don't play the land, you put it on the battlefield. Because if it's the first land, if it's the second land, you can also put it on the battlefield. Ah, so that's actually a nice little uh, added advantage. Yeah. yeah, okay, so you're actually able to get two land drops then in that case. Exactly. But still, I don't really like the ultimate. I mean, it's still 2 five, 5 That's actually really good. But you With evasion, yeah. Yeah, but you minus 6 to her. So, I mean, 2 five, 5 is flying. You'll probably win you the game anyways. Yeah. But looking at the other things, I think it's a bit underwhelming. Yeah. So, yeah. Still though, being able to put this down on turn three and plus twoing it to make it into a three loyalty planeswalker and having scry two, knowing what's underneath that next turn, minus zeroing it to get that free, uh, free creature, card, creature like land, really good creature and, yeah. or land that you need, I think it's gonna still be super, super strong. It's still tier one, not as strong as the other planeswalkers that we've seen, but you know, if you're playing it in limited, you shouldn't be complaining. Exactly. Yeah. You still got a planeswalker. Never and look a gift planeswalker in the mouth. And it's not like she's bad at all because no. she's quiet, she puts things on the table for free and makes a big thing. So yeah, 
It's always tier It'll one. still win you the game. Exactly. Yeah. Samut, Voice of Descent. Three, a red and a green. Legendary creature, human warrior, a 3-4 with flash, double strike, vigilance, haste, and other creatures you control of haste, and for white and tap, untap target creature. So it does a lot of things. The flash, 5 mana, 3-4 with double strike, that's already really good. Insanity. And then it has vigilance, so when you attack, um, then you can untap your exert creature after that. Uh, I mean, wow, that's it's insanity, this card, really. How exactly. Much, how much stuff? And they still found room for the flavor text. How, 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 how do they do that? Small fonts. That's how you do it. Super good card. Always play it. Tier 1. This card wins games. You can put it together with some exert creatures, and then you are you're off to the races. Yeah. Awesome. Super nice. Those are the mythics. Let's have a look at the conclusion. In conclusion, as usual, the multicolored cards are really good. Why? Because they're more difficult to cast, so they have to be better. So that's why usually they're going to be tier two cards anyway. I would avoid pretty much all the artifacts except for the monuments. The monuments are really good. And I would avoid all the aftermath cards that start with a blue spell. <laughs> that's pretty much, in a nutshell, that's the conclusion for the multicolored cards. When it comes to the lands, any land that gives you the colors you want are always playable. And the ones that give you colorless, you know what, they're also playable. So you can pretty much also play all the lands. Yeah, but watch out with too much colorless and too much different kind of colors you wanna play. Yeah. And you know, it kind of sounds a bit biased against blue, like you said it. it I am biased against blue. They shouldn't have such bad beginning parts <laughs> of aftermath cards. But the second part, if it's blue, then it's great. So, yeah. Mm, except for comply. Uh, okay, fair enough. Anyway, long story short, there's a reason why multicolored cards are good. They're more difficult to play, which also means, as Stefan said, be careful when you're going for those colorless lands. And also, it makes it very attractive to play some of the land searching cards that green has, for example. All in all, uh, don't forget to subscribe for the most powerful decks and advice everyone can afford. It's gonna be a, it was a lot of fun looking at all these cards with you guys. I hope we found it useful for now for your uh, pre-release and for your sealed and for uh, any other uh, format that you're gonna be playing with this. Um, also, don't forget to join us on Facebook and on Twitter because that's where we're gonna continue this discussion. So please let us know how you did. Let us know what were some of the, the most valuable cards, which cards won you the game, which cards were a very big surprise. We're very curious to hear how you guys did. We're also gonna go play and we're gonna go see if we can kick back kick butt or whether we get our butts handed to us in a humiliating fashion exactly but first i'm gonna sleep yes i think that's a very good <laughs> idea sleep for the weary yeah. we'll see you at the pre-release thanks for watching i'm david i'm stefan this was budget mtg decks